Well, while the civil war in Sierra Leone left more than 50,000 dead, it also orphaned over 300,000 children. And this in a country where there's virtually no government safety net. While life is certainly not easy for many of the children you're about to meet, it is decidedly better than the prospects of life on the street. Life is often hard in Sierra Leone, but inside these walls, life is a bit easier for children that have survived unimaginable adversity. It's wash day for the orphans that live here in the Wellington Orphanage. With only room for a few changes of clothes, such work is a constant. Loving children whose smiles can conceal the heartache they've known. Many having witnessed their own parents' death, while others are too young to remember how they arrived here. All they know is for the first time in their lives, they have a family, albeit a very large one. We are now brothers and sisters. I'm so happy about that. One big family. Yeah, so I'm so happy for that. Some people that stay. Here, the children know where their next meal will come from, even if it is predominantly rice. Yeah, and how to cook. Which is what brought an Oklahoma City aid organization back to Sierra Leone, trying to improve the diets of the children that live here buying them food to eat today, but also establishing a sustainable system so they can feed themselves for years to come. Stephanie Shuri is with the Oklahoma City nonprofit 117. These kids have to um, work hard to do everything, whether that's uh, getting water or washing their clothes or taking a bath. Um, everything takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. And like children the world over, boys find the energy for a makeshift soccer game on the patio, all before church. It's Sunday morning here in the capital of Freetown, dressed in their best. The orphans, with their friends from Oklahoma in tow, make their way to a service with residents of this poor neighborhood, all to give thanks for the little that they have. The times when I would sit with the kids and have conversations with them and there was there was no entertainment to be found and yet uh, there's a, a joy, I can't explain it, inside of me that, um, that, that can't be duplicated. Reverend Hassan Mansari runs the For Him charity organization that houses the orphans. A former school teacher, he became an aid worker after seeing the massive need all around him. His orphanage currently homed upwards of 200 children, the lucky ones with bunk beds, while others sleep on simple mats. It's early Monday morning in Freetown. A faded flag flies over the orphanage and students ready for school, crossing open sewers and making their way down a rocky path to arrive to a school with classrooms with no walls. Located in a building yet to be finished, classes here are basic. And while some of the Oklahomans stayed behind to help with that day's lessons, others crammed inside a vehicle for what by Oklahoma standards would be just a short drive, but here takes much of the day. Over rough roads we travel to another orphanage, this one located in what was a slaughterhouse. Where livestock were once penned, blind children go to school and live here. Uh, have measles, you have a cataract, malnourishment, and all the rest of it. Some accidents, some during the war. I remember two or three cases here. This uh, blast, that shock. He gave us love eternally. Love is the answer. It's a bleak existence inside these dark walls but you would never know it from the joy here. When they learn a church from the States has sent the first mattresses most will have ever slept on. From here, our journey heads into the country's interior, down dusty roads and onto a wooden ferry. We cross the lazy river in a canoe and wait for our ride to arrive, and then head out to the village of Matumbo. Here in some of the most remote parts of Sierra Leone, students will walk up to eight miles to come to class. Even so, 
in this small village, there are more students than there are classrooms. Inside this classroom, children are learning about agriculture. Besides that, that is the only occupation that is found here. You see? Being a poverty stricken area, this is the only that is the only subject that we have to get acquainted with the kids so that they will nurture the interest. In a school not built by the government, but with private donations. Government after the war do not have the financial resources. And we as local people feel we cannot just sit and wait on government. And so we decided to do um, to make our own little efforts. And so with the help of several Oklahomans, uh, we are able to get financial resources. Not much has changed here through the passage of time. Women of the village are cleaning rice just the same as they have for centuries. And education is key for the development of these communities because these are places where such uh, educational institutions never existed. But like much of the country, Matumbo was not spared during the Civil War. Now, during the war, all of the homes here in Matumbo were completely destroyed. And while the mud bricks may seem quite basic and the tin roofs very simple, they're actually a huge improvement over what they had. The people in this village had their homes burnt down completely. But out of the givings of those people, about $6,000 was given to us rebuilding the homes and were able to build homes before uh, snakes would come into their homes and would bite people at night and people die and the roofs were all grass. But now most of the homes have tin, which is a huge blessing out of the grant that we got from for him. Giving children like these a chance for a better life. Back on the road, it's a journey back to the Sierra Leone capital of Freetown, only made longer by car trouble. After some much needed routine maintenance, we get back on the road with just another reminder that even the simplest things in Sierra Leone are never easy.